go. Welcome back to the Lemon Squeeze podcast. And today we've got more of a serious one, um, quite an interesting one. Um, we're here with Darren, Sheriff, Dan, yeah. and Kate. And they're from uh, Broken Dreams Awareness. Um, let's just get straight into the first question, really. Um, who are you, really? I'll let Dan answer that. You can move that thing to your face if you like. It moves about. We're uh, just a uh, group of people, basically, just going to monitor online activity with some certain individuals and go and get them for it, you know. Yeah. Making it awareness, uh, making awareness for it as well, so everyone knows what, what yeah. these people are doing and uh, who they are, who yeah. you're shaking hands with, you know. That's um, that's child abuse awareness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I can't even see you there. Look. So we're, we're a group of volunteers. Um, um, an online child protection team is how we address ourselves. Um, and we police, police and monitor online activity regarding uh, mainly pre-teens um, yeah. and online predators. Right, okay. So you you protect children, basically, yes. is where we're going with this. And so far as I can gather, you guys set up a decoy and you, you don't actually go out fishing, but you set the bait and you wait for predators to contact someone like Kate for example so yeah? we have decoys um, they're fully trained um, they'll never use anything that's enticing uh, right down to um, sort of emojis they would never use that because that could be looked upon as quite enticing but yeah yeah um, and they, they sort of make a child's profile and they sit behind that and they wait for these predators to engage with yeah them. Um, and then the predators will direct the conversation um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so Broken Dreams is is an organisation trying to kickstart a um, trying to get awareness of predators, but you're you're trying to get how uh, to put this. So you're trying to make a good example of a a department that we want in the government. Is where I'm going with this. So, yeah. Yeah. The hunting's been around for six, seven years. Um, we been running as a team for two and a half years um like predators evolved the hunting is modernizing and always evolving um there's a big community in the hunting industry yeah. um ranging from decoys admin security um um aftercare safeguarding teams so there's a whole community behind the scenes that come together to make the hunting movement right okay all right so i'm going to start going through these questions now that's all right um, so the first one I've got here is, um, what do you refer yourselves as? Um, I know that Darren was explaining that you get the stick of a vigilante, which is not the right word for this. Um, what 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 is it? Is that what would you refer yourself as? Well, a vigilante is somebody that takes the law upon themselves. We're not doing that. We are speeding up the process and handing them over to the authorities to be governed under the UK law system. So um, we don't like the word vigilante. Yeah. A vigilante is somebody that takes a law upon their own hands. We're not doing that. We're just merely um, yeah. policing. Assisting the police. Assisting, really. Assisting yeah. the police, yeah? yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, God, he's going to fucking... Give me a sec. Okay. So, so the start of this organisation, when did it start? And like, um, so how did it start is basically where I'm going with that. Are you referring to the hunting movement or us as a team? You uh, like use us as a team of individuals. Um, so the team started about two and a half years ago. I think we had our second birthday, didn't we, at Christmas time? Yeah, yeah um, we did. Yeah. So <coughs> it's not old then. It's not old. Our team's not old. It's it's quite new. Yeah. Um, we started really. Um, there was a few of us that started the team. Um, and we've led on to just trying to do things in a way that um, take the. F the, the humiliation out of the degrading to try and get the results. Yeah. Uh, okay. Pretty much the team started, yeah, two years ago with the intentions to just try and do it the way that we think is the way to do it. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we can work with the police and all that as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So did you know each other then before this all, or did you come together because of this? No, we, we've been gym buddies for a long time, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. Um, We're from the same area as well, so we just. Yeah. I know Dan's brother, he, was, uh, he worked on the door yeah, with yeah, me yeah. at past. Um, Kate, I met through the hunting um, when she was on her previous team and yeah. then joined us. 
a lot of our security and a lot of our boys were all very local, aren't we? Yeah. We all Essex based, yeah. Yeah. If our kids don't know each other, we know each other's brothers or we know we in yeah. some way we've grown up around each other. It's all linked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's a good way to be. Good way to be. Um, we've got a lot, lot of trust in each other as well which is one family yeah. trust in, in, in family. Family. yeah in a family yeah that's it yeah yeah do so you ever asked about your backgrounds uh, like what was you before you was doing this I'm like, just self-employed you know what I mean yeah. worked for myself yeah you know yeah what I mean so I, I didn't know about this community beforehand how bad it was yeah you know what I mean so I spoke to Sheriff and he said what he does and I sort of went home that night and thought didn't think much of it I yeah. thought what do you mean what he does? And I spoke to him a bit more. He said, come out with us one day, have a look, see what you think. And I yeah. went out and that's when it started for me. Because like, it's almost that it's so dark that it's not believable. It's not talked about. When I first spoke to you, I just couldn't really believe it was a thing. Like, yeah. I understand what you're doing. I just, I couldn't imagine how how dark the world really is. Yeah. That's where that's we're it, going yeah. with this. Very, very dark. dark yeah. And so that's what tr- triggered this all off for each other, the yes, thing. This is this is madness. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, paedophiles have been about since biblical times. That's something you can never forget. To eradicate the problem is unrealistic. It will always be here. Um, if we were to, like Kate said on an interview with John Wedger the other day, you know, if we were to stop catching them, it's because we're doing something wrong. It's not because they're not there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what the internet does is it gives somebody... Uh, uh, like we were talking about the other day in the in the, in the pub, um, you used to be a day when you you know you used to shut your doors to your house, yeah, shut your windows, and a father, a parent, a mother <coughs> can defend the property, but they knew that if somebody was to come in and harm them, they had to come through that door, they had to come through that window. Yeah, yeah. The reality is now you don't have to let them in; they're already in your house on the device, yeah, sitting on the couch with your child. Um, Room in your child, whilst you could be at the other end of the couch, not even knowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in the, the same scary room. Thing about it, and what the internet does is it gives you a gives you a hold, a threshold to be something that you're not. So, if you've got a low paid job and you drive a really rubbish car, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but however, you can pretend that you're a bank clerk and you drive a Ferrari, and you can groom people a lot easier than if you're right. facing them in you know reality. Right, right. Do you find um, is is it common to find like, are paedophiles generally from a certain class of individual? Do you they, find... They are. Like... You'd actually... You probably we've speak seen that them. Might, so yeah. we've, we've seen them, haven't we, where you'd think, I'd actually drink with him in the pub. Really? Or, you know what I mean? It actually yeah. seems a genuine, but you just... Could be your next-door neighbour. You just don't know. You yeah. Don't, it it could be people would, you've known for years, you know? It's it's not... It, it, it is so many... And they say it's so common now, and it's, they're, they're everywhere. Yeah. It is uh, becoming more of a pandemic than a... The right. scary thing is, you could walk. Some of the guys, I mean, some of the guys we catch, you kind of look at, and you think, oh, they're a bit strange anyway, I get that. But there's other guys we catch, you could walk past them on a day to day basis and yeah. you never suspect yeah. a thing. Um, I.e., the other day we caught a scout leader. Mm. Um, you know, if if he was that suspectful of what he was doing, he wouldn't be a scout leader, and the parents would have complained. Yeah. It just goes to show, you know, everybody can wear a mask. It was almost a plan for the geezer to be a scout leader. Mm. Probably, yeah, that's what we think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everything he seemed to do through life, he seemed to target children, didn't he? Yeah, Put yourself in around children. Yeah, that's it, yeah. To benefit him. Yeah. What he wanted to do. All right, um, let's move on to some other questions, if you don't mind. And at the end, we just, because now, get through his question more, and you can relax more, no, and you can start telling stories no, 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 no. and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to uh, spread the message as much as we can here. Uh, so, the purpose of Broken Dreams, obviously, to to eradicate paedophiles and start an organisation. Start an organisation to to keep on top of this, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so w- what is the goal behind your project? How far do you want to go with this? Um, shall I answer that? Yeah, yeah. Um, the goal behind the project is to take the hunting into the next, into the twenty, you know, to modernise it with with the way hunting so far has been a lot of decoys on on basic computers with basic software devices. Um, the aim goal is obviously to just to, to completely eradicate people and taking advantage of our vulnerable kids and our kids online. Um, until, but the reality, the reality of that is, until the big internet organisations start taking actions and putting proper legislations or, or, or um, safety barriers in, where signing in process is actually correct and true, um, 
you know, our goal is to, as we as the hunting becomes more successful, you're pushing them more underground. To when they're pushing them more underground, you have to update the software. You have to get with the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, every hunting, we would love to not be able to go out there and have to do it. That's the end result. But the, yeah, yeah. the, the sad thing is that will never happen. And the trouble is, every new thing that we get, they get something new as well, which helps their side of things. Yeah. So it is. It's always going to be a cat and mouse. Cat and mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always get more clever. They're going to get it's more the thing that is because we're, we're just are. Yeah, we're, we're a hazard to yeah. the we're their hazard. So yeah, yeah. So they don't want to uh, come across us. So they're going to get everything they can, and they get all the software, all the new technology. And yeah, they make it harder. So they're evolving as well as you're evolving. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's Absolutely. never going to stop, really, is it? <clears throat> no. Constantly as well. Constantly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one. Next one. Let's plough through these. There's a lot to talk about, isn't it? Like, we could talk it's a all, huge talk conversation, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So, what what help do you get from the government? Are you literally getting none? We can't even get any help from the government. Um, you know, the change that we've seen over the last couple of years is a lot of response officers and a lot of the first response officers to the scene. They're handling us a lot better. They don't treat as loud as vigilante groups. They're, they're coming out. They're very calm. They take on board what, what we do, a handover to the police. And, the you know, um, the, the, the change that I've witnessed over two and a half years with the police, the way they deal with us now to what they did when I first started and even before that, um, they're starting to work with us. Money-wise, government-wise, funding or anything like that, <clears throat> currently we don't have because it's still um, a topic that seems to want to be brushed under the carpet. And, right. <clears throat> you know, it, it depends how deep you want to go with it, you know. It's well, been now... It's the, 7 o'clock. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> but why do you think that is? Why do you think they're trying to ignore that? Um... <laughs> That's a difficult it, question. It's, like, it, it's, seem, it's, it's, it's how far you want to go into it and how much sort of trouble you want to get into when you're talking about it. It's, it's just so deep. It just, it's um, there in plain hindsight. So why? Well, Jimmy Savile was in plain hindsight, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Gary Glitter was in plain hindsight. The problem was people were a lot naive then to what's going on now. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, there's a top circle that seem to not wish to enforce the laws and... Um, it's known that there's been circles in the top politicians and yeah. people like that that are, you know they're in all walks of life yeah all walks of life they're, unfortunately it's just one of them things isn't it yeah and, and do you think they find each other because these paedophile because as you were saying Darren like, um, there's paedophile rings yeah and like large whatsapp groups um how like how does a paedophile find another one? Like it, this is, I say like the, the reason I say this is because um, where it's in so plain hindsight, how are they how are they hiding? You asked like, the question that I probably might have asked a, a lot for a long time is how would somebody drum up a conversation with another fellow like minded guy on the yeah. same subject that their their interests are into children? What the internet does is it gives you the fact that you don't have to face these guys face to face. So they meet on big platforms and they come into group chats and they share links and they share child abuse images and child abuse videos. Um, but they never have to meet each other. Yeah. Um, it's a question I've very, you know, I've asked a lot, you know, how would somebody even drum up a conversation yeah. where they like young, girl, young girls or boys? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's how I'm thinking. It's like, that doesn't, I've never, I've never actually even been in a situation where no one's ever suggested anything or even obviously suggested it. Yeah, so right. how do you... They're, you know, in, they're sort of in groups or on apps. Um, there you go. <laughs> cheers, thank you very much. Um, you got this one? You've got loads of them. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming. Sorry, re re repeat that question again, sorry. I forgot what the word question was. in my face. I'll take them No, you hold it for me. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, so how do you think they, they find each other? All right, so obviously they're in these, these rooms that can be titled... Uh, I've got to be careful what I say, haven't I? Yeah. Maybe something to do with school children in the yeah. title. So they all know what that room's about. They all yeah. go in there. They're sharing stuff. Creates trust amongst each other. Yeah. And then they're messaging. And it's just as simple yeah. as that. It can be as simple as that. Right. Or even in prison. That's mm. another one. That's a big one. Have you ever been offered heroin? Never. 
But if you wanted to find it, you'd find it, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. That's a point. He looks like a dealer. I've been saying that for ages. Not a part time hobby. Drop it while it's on. How do you know? How do you know? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you should have cut your head. Yeah, it's very dark. It's very dark. Is, is, is there any stories that's happened quite recently that you, you're allowed to share? Any, any examples of, um, of how dark we, this can go? Neil Ashcroft? As soon as he's been we sentenced. Share, yeah, I mean, we can share any ones that are on our page. So, yeah, Neil Ashcroft, Kate decoyed um, a guy called Neil Ashcroft. Um, he's just received eight years, three months. Yeah. Eight years, three months. Yes. He was one of the strangest characters we've ever come across. Um, he came from Brighton, didn't he, on the train with yeah. his modernised <laughs> electric bike. Modernised electric, electric bike, bike yeah. where he had modernised his bike to yeah. have a longer battery life on it. And he'd got to Tower Hill Station. And when he got to Tower Hill Station, he, <laughs> he jumped on his electric bike from Tower Hill Station all the way to Billericay. Well... Is it a long ride? That's a 40, 40 mile, 40 mile <laughs> ride on an electric bike. Well, anyway, the, the daft kid broke down <laughs> like a mile and a half from, from the child's house. But as much as we laugh about this, um, the guy had turned up whilst 12, 12 year old? Yes. 12 mm-hmm. year old. Yeah, 12 Mum was at work. Now, in reality, people could go, oh, who's leaving a 12 year old? But this, this, this is the 21st century. It does happen. Single parents have to go out and earn money. And unfortunately there is a lot of parents that do leave their 12 year olds 13 year olds at home you can see how it happened it, kind of, yeah. and it happens well this guy was turning up with the intention he brought a full when I say a photographer's kit he brought a professional yeah. photographer's rucksack with yeah. the camera spent into little bits all the bits. equipment extra memory cards <clears throat> with the intention to his intentions was to rape the young girl to take photos of the young girl right. and to do all of this before her mum had come back slip out, get back on his bike and, and go back to Brighton. Well, when we had questioned him, he was one of the, sh- the darkest individuals we'd met, wasn't he? he? He judged kids by their Chinese zodiac signs, didn't he? So if one had a birthday... Random. So there was an eight-year-old, unfortunately this eight-year-old, he had managed to groom her into sending uh, indecent images. So this is a real child. Um, <clears throat> so the case had been handed over to the police before we'd actually got him. But we already had carried on talking to another decoy, wasn't it? We managed to catch him on the sting. But this eight-year-old had a, a Chinese zodiac sign was Snake. And he was saying to us, oh, I'm, I'm watching that eight-year-old. He said, she's a snake. He was calling her a snake, wasn't he? Like, because... You know, that I've got to be careful of her. She's a right snake, she is. But she, she had sent him in. He said, what? <laughs> is it another case with him? You know, a lot of people go, oh, you know, no one would send photos to someone like him in that. Well, wrong. She did. did. She was eight yeah. year old. She did. Behind her mum's back on an iPad, he got her to delete it all, covered the trace. He had previously been caught a month before for something, and he was, his laptop was mm-hmm. handed in. Yeah. <clears throat> but he was claiming that he was helping the police with a Russian site. Um, what that really means is that he was caught with decent images and he was getting them off a, a certain Russian site on the internet. Right. He did try and pretend that he was doing what we was doing, didn't he, at one point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's quite common yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a common thing. <clears throat> is, this one, is this the guy, I uh, went for, for your Facebook earlier on, um, is that one of the latest one? It was the... Um, We've just took up a photo up of him um, recently, Neil Ashcroft. He got eight years. Yeah. Um, so he's an older guy. Yeah. Very skinny in the face. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, be re-premiering the video tomorrow, I think. Or yeah. T- maybe tonight or tomorrow, because um, that was it was a really powerful thing, and the guy was an absolute predator. Um, and like I say, what the eleven, the levels of intention of harm he wished on that child when he was turned up to the property, it's scary to know as a parent that people would do that and be gone before you even That's got That's in home. your house. Mm-hmm. In her house. Yeah. Uh, and the trouble is it's always going to go on while some people are buying it. Yeah. So it's big money in it. It's and like... It's always going to happen. I can't wrap my head around like... Or the audacity of the fellow. Like, how, how did he think he was going to get away with that? That's, that's it, yeah. How did he come all, all that way just for a 12-year-old? You know what I mean? To, to rape a 12-year-old. That's, they that's do. why they come. They I mean, do get away with it, though. This they is do. the thing. There we is we say it all the time, don't we? Well, we've just done that one. Maybe one's just slipped by us. You know, it's... 
It's Osh more common as well than you, you can believe. Do you know what I mean? It's bad, isn't it? Ask yourself this. Why did he get the electric bike from Tower Hill? The, le the reason was not to test his bike out. It was so he wouldn't be able to be detected getting off any station local to, the, to where the kid was. So that's right. a pre-planned, premeditated... Um, of, you know the, the way he was executing what he wanted to do coming from Tower Hill no one would have guessed that a predator would get off at Tower Hill and use an electric bike all the way down so, so even if you wouldn't even search it, that area the, would you even you if the mob would come back realise something was wrong called the police the police's first things would be check the local cameras check the stations well yeah. would they think of checking Tower Hill stations no no, no so no. he's used the electric bike to come all the way from there to there um very premeditated, so... And then you've got to think, if that child refused to do what he wanted to do, then how far would he have gone, would he...? Yeah. You never know, so it's just... We're just glad to intercept all that before it happens, you know? Yeah. That David Miller, was it David Miller? Which one was that? The comment he made about when we asked him um, what would he do if the child refused to do what he wanted to, and his response... What was his response to that? Um, sure. shut, it, shut it up. Mm. Very, very... Yeah. Shut the child up. Shut the yeah. child up. So if the child screamed um, and refused to do what he wanted the child to do, <clears throat> he, he openly said, I'll shut the child up. Right. So do they actively only go on their own? Or have you found them going to a child's house with sort of more than one? A lot of people do this and they want to be undetected. Um, they might communicate, from my experience, a lot of them might communicate and be in rings on the internet basis. Um, I haven't come across um, one where he's had an accomplice shit, no. Not to say that it hasn't happened, but no, a lot of these guys like to, they prefer to operate on the moment. They're, they're clever. Two mouths keeping quiet is harder than one mouth keeping quiet. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Because uh, you've got 100 teams, right? And e each team has, could up to, up to 25 in each each team more than that, that's up to 40, that. 40 yeah. 50 there's very yeah. big teams yeah. out there. It, it's, there's one team out there that's got 32 decoys mm. 32 decoys and they're wow. working and they've got four or five predators on, on working at a time yeah, i mean there was wow. we done a sting the other day and in that day there was 27, 27. yeah 27 stings in one day in one, in one day. day i've never known that and that's that's so you're catching the pedophiles in the thousands now mm. Thousands. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's always been that way, but the internet's just made it easier for them yeah. and probably easier for us to see it's what they're doing. They're doing there, yeah. And the way it's done. Yeah, yeah. So, And that's just within a couple of years. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the, the hunting movement, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, the hunting movement went through the Supreme Court. So what the story is, is a predator was caught by a team and his barristers decided to take it right up to the Supreme Court, which was one of our top courts in the country. Um, you've got the Supreme Court and you've got the Court of Appeals. They're the two highest courts in this country. So he took it all the way to the Supreme Court and he said that the hunting teams infringe on their human rights. Well, the judge turned around and went, absolutely not. He says, we need these hunting teams. We cannot ignore their convictions. The um and are in the controversial side of it is the live feeds. <clears throat> yeah. So the, when you do like a live feed... I've, I've watched them. Um, so basically you detain a paedophile there and there um, with no force but just asking them to abide, um, if that's the word for it. And you don't get violent. You don't shout. You just ask questions that you them. already have the evidence yep. for anyway. Yes, yeah. Um, and there was one that his phone went off just recently in his pocket. He didn't let him take it out. Um, <laughs> They could tamper with it or anything. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, that's evidence that's there. Evidence, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, what I have seen on like WhatsApp, you can get rid of messages now uh, for both sides. Yeah. How do you stop that? Or do you screenshot as and when these messages are going through? What do you mean? Can you repeat that? So on WhatsApp, I can send you a message and then I can get rid of it. If I press delete, it will delete for, for both sides. For both sides. Yeah, like okay, so, so to protect yourself, because he had his phone on him. Um, that's what made it come to mind. Like, what if he just <clears throat> deletes that? Well, a decoy will always record each message, whether it's by screenshots or whatever or not. Um, again, I've got to be careful not to say too much on tactics, but um, a decoy will never... A lot, a lot of the platforms that are used, <laughs> the preteens go on, they seem to be made by nonces for nonces, i.e., where you're saying, I know what you're saying, you can... Delete for everyone. You can do it on Facebook Tim. as well. Well, a lot of these, a lot, some of these platforms delete messages within twelve hours, 
24 hours or two hours even. Mm. So they'll send a message and it will self-delete. So the e-coins have always got to be up to scratch with it anyway. Now, it's never so much about the message. It's more about the link to that, that either that phone number or the platform or the profiles. Um, so yeah, they could, you got to remember, most of the time that we catch these guys, they're not sitting there expecting it. So they're like a deer in the headlights. Um, when you, when you intercept them on a child, if they come to meet a child, they're still expecting a child. They're not expecting a team in front of them. If you, yeah, yeah. When you're knocking on someone's door, they're at yeah. home in their security of their home with their wives or their kids about or whatever. They're not expecting the door. Yeah. They knock on the door from people talk to them to address them about child sex offences. At that point, you've got to be a very special person to immediately think about destroying and not panicking and thinking. But even if they go up and start deleting, it just becomes a further evident, a further offence. Yeah, I have noticed they they do seem to look like very small. They not small, but they're very weedy men. They don't look. They're all shapes and sizes, honestly. Uh, they're just ones I've seen. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. your page so far. Give, they give that impression as well when they stood in front of us on a sting, but when they're on the phone to that child, complete opposite. Right, so, they, so they're so they actually catfishing this child as well? Is that the word sometimes, for it? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're not exactly who they say they are. We have cool people that their pictures, are, they use different pictures, but it's 100% them. Yeah. The phone on them as evidence and things like that. Yeah. They try all tactics, they're gonna try, but they slip up because they um, it gets the better of them. You're, yeah. you're, 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 I get where you're going with that. But, uh, we've had this sub, uh, chat. Have I caught what I would call your alpha male type? What I mean by that? Yeah, yeah. Your alpha male gym geezer. You know, a geezer, <laughs> type, you know. Yeah. A, 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 what I mean by an alpha male. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't think I have. Do you remember one? No. I don't think I have caught that yeah. type. <clears throat> So you, you, you're saying these guys are small and, and we need to... Mark Mahoney, big bloke, yeah? Um, some of them are very big. Some of them, that, you're looking at them on the camera. Tubby, though, not big, like, yes. oh, big frame. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're not, yeah. uh, you, you're, uh, you're you imagine the damage that, that they do to a child, that person as well, yeah, do you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? So, yeah, it's just... What, what comes across as very small and scrawny to us, um, when a child has been abused, that very squawny, you know, squeeny fella becomes a big, powerful figure in their life. Um, and until, so they have this higher power over their abuser, and that's the problem. So even though what we might look at them and go, they're not a danger, as even that, that child's growing up, that person is a very big figure in their life. And that's another reason I, I'm all for the live feeds, because what that does is it takes victims that have been either done these guys that we catch who might have abused somebody in the past well they're realizing now that this is not that big almighty powerful figure that's stolen their higher power and taken everything from them they're now squirming at the other end of a camera in front of people answering questions and they're, they're back humanized again yeah, yeah yeah and that can give someone the power to come forward and go he done this to me you know yeah yeah i was gonna say because they look very scrawny and small and obviously you're, a, you're an ex-military man, is that, mm -hmm. is that right? Mm -hmm. So you coming at them was probably quite scary, to be honest with you. Very well, I'm just a bit shocking. of a midget, to be honest with you. I mean, we've got this man here, and the rest of the security <laughs> yeah. size, um, yeah. Dow, Dow leads of security. They're, they're, we've, got well, we've, big, we've got the big cage. boys, Big boys on there. You look yeah. at them and you yeah. think, I'm not going to bother running. You know what I mean? I'm not going to bother <laughs> yeah, trying yeah, to fight yeah. them or whatever. And that's basically what we do. We don't intimidate just, them, but we yeah, just... Yeah, I mean, we, just, we like the soft and easy approach. Yeah, our, our boys are really big. I mean, Dan's a big guy, but I'd say half of them yeah. roughly his height. But you got people. We got the ex cage weight light heavyweight champion Jim of the, the world, world, the world James yeah. Zewick. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got some tough, hard, and weathered fellas on the on yeah. the security. So, me being in front of them is the least of their worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're 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 normally the one that. Um, you do the stream, right? And you're the one that speaks I most talk. of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So c can we go through what bits you actually do? So you're... Yeah. Uh, I'm head of security, yeah. Yeah. I'll get all the security ready for the stings when we go out on the sting. Yeah. So I'll make sure all the security is there on time at the meet place. And then crowd control. We do crowd control. 
our job is to look after the hunters. So when they're doing their, their, their live sting, they don't have to look after their shoulder every 10 minutes to right. make sure they're safe. We keep them safe so they can do their job. So that's, that's mainly our job. And, and, the, and, and to keep the predator safe as well. Yeah. Mm. As soon as we put them under a Section 25 mm. citizen's arrest, it, they're our responsibility then. We have to look bound, after them. Yeah. We're duty bound. We're we duty are duty bound. We have a yeah. duty. So duty, I'm yeah. guessing once it starts happening, a crowd build up. So this is in a station. Yes. <laughs> it could be, yeah. And now, so yeah. you are you don't know whether this guy's going to help this guy or he knows this guy. So it can get quite kind of messy. We, really. we take it away from, if we meet him at a station, we take it away from the yeah. station because obviously we don't want everyone to know what we're yeah. doing. We're not out there for the publicity and all that, you know, what we're doing and all that, and the yeah, glory yeah. and all that. We're there just to get them, speak to them, question them, and then hand them over to the police. You know what I mean? That's what we're there for. Yeah, okay. I'm a hunter, and these two guys next to me, Kate and Dan, are my fellow hunting partners. Um, Kate also decoys. Um, you put your decoy death hunt down for a bit, haven't you? But do you plan to take that back up? 100%. I'm yeah. dying to. What's that, sorry? Decoying. <clears throat> okay. I feel like this has gone to the back burner slightly for a little while while I'm yep. out with these lads catching them. But so yeah. you're a hunter as well? Mm. And a security? Mm. No, and decoy. She and does, decoy. She, she, and decoy. she does help yeah. with security because obviously if we get uh, females in that case, really good. She controls. Plus she's yeah, jump yeah. in front of any fella as well and they... A fella, not a lot of fellas are going to meet a woman so they just... They listen yeah, to yeah, her yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But we don't try it. Even with the crowds don't we we try and just keep it all humble don't we, we try and get away we've from had, that situation we've had some edgy really. situations you know yeah, what i mean yeah. but it's always finished up finished Although off some, well, isn't it? some old girl and dagging did get the better of us <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to mention it <laughs> why did we always tell the story and then i have to tell right. the truth and you look silly but you we've had it up. we've had preds used cars as weapon you've been drove out haven't you yeah, yeah. so have you yeah, yeah. i've been i've you been cut the ribs yeah. you had a cut the ribs broken yeah i got run down didn't yeah. i well, didn't well you got what? dragged along by a car dragged along yeah, yeah. yeah. and then run over and then run so you've had a few ribs broken doing this yeah, yeah. what yeah. happened there then what? But they've got something to get away for they don't want to get caught do they so they're gonna yeah. try so, and kill yeah. you to get away because yeah. his whole life on the line so what happened on this occasion the guy drove down from exeter had me to meet a 13 year old um he drove all the way exeter from exeter three and a half hours booked a hotel room it wasn't even too far from here do you know what <clears> i mean was it he come down he was in chelmsford oh, he's been convicted now so um he was in chelmsford and uh as he realised we'd blocked the car park off, but he decided to try and drive off. Um, yeah. took Danny, Thank you very much. Took Danny with him holding the car. Um, Danny ended up on the floor. You'll see it on the camera. I think he took us all. He took us all, actually. He took us all. Yeah. 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 Had to physically yank him out of the car, get him on the floor. Um, if you remember, he was spitting everywhere, wasn't he? Oh, he, was, he, was he was a nasty, was nasty, nasty. Passing nasty, wind, nasty. Passing wind in the yeah. car. He was dis- the thing is with these guys, a lot of these guys, Monsters. They're like they're they're like kids. Their minds are like a kid. So we, we, even when we're interviewing them, we'll talk to them back on a kid basis. You know, if you, when they start to throw their toys out of the pram, it's very like a petulant child. You know, a, a kid in a place in a playground. Yeah. And the 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 levels that they go to, of, you know, pure childlessness. It's, it's ridiculous. Some of the answers they give, I don't know. I mean, some of them will actually sit there, hold their arms up, cross them, turn their backs on you and yeah. not answer. But Well, you can imagine that because like, when you're a kid, you're powerless over your parents. And they used to say, we're grown-ups, you're kids. And you're yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, but it's... when you're caught out and your whole life is about to change, yeah. there's not well, we really sh- a right answer, is we there? We even show them the evidence we've got, and don't we? we put it in front of them. We actually show them. Like, yeah. We won't show the camera, but we'll show them what we've got. Yeah. And they'll still look and lie. And try and light and deny it, and yeah, yeah. I saw, it's uh, just <laughs> I saw a couple earlier on where he just they go, go they go back on it to try and cooperate with you because they think if they cooperate, you think you're going to give them a chance and, mm. and things like that. So, what's the difference between like oh, obviously, I understand what decoy is, we'll, we'll, we'll go around each one in a minute, but what does a hunter do specifically? Um, so we will be handed the evidence packs from a decoy, and we'll yeah, do the, that's once it goes sexual, though, isn't it? I, I it believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, obviously, we work under the Child Sexual Communications Act of 2003. Um, so, we will do... The <laughs> it's a lot louder than you think, isn't it, that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a Coke can. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> we'll edit that bit. <laughs> um, so, we do tracking, researching, um, and then we obviously assemble the team when Dale's got the security ready, and... The hunters will generally, Dale's the head of security, but the hunter will always overlook the pack. Yeah. So, um, he'll kind of control the whole situation and work with Dale. Um, 
I see, I see. And the yeah. main point is to interview the, the, the predator to get the admittances. We go for three things on Broken Dreams. The admittance, the cry for help, and to get in their head to when they started, when they were triggered to think like this yeah. about young kids. If we can get all three of them, that's a successful sting. Yeah. Okay. So um, what, what, I'm, what I'm gathering is once it goes sexual, it goes to you. And then you do the meet up. Essentially, you talk to them from then to do no, no, the no, meet. The decoy will always be the to the last minute. Same conversation, okay. right up to the point where we've intercepted the child. Okay, I'm with you. It sounds it, it sounds fun. I'm not gonna lie. It sounds yes. a bit of a buzz. So Obviously, it's not. We'll have to get you out of us, won't we? Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. What I'm saying, but it sounds kind of. It's one of them. Once you've done one, that's it. You're hooked. Yeah. Well, it's it's in, cool and sneaky, but yeah. for the right reason. Yeah. Well, we're in the group chat. To the decoys right up to the minute that we actually catch the predator you know what i mean so we yeah. are still talking to the decoys the predator is still talking to the decoys until we actually catch them so they're still on their phone at some points still talking to the child literally while you're watching their car or while vehicle, we're watching right? yeah. them and all that yeah because they think they're actually meeting that child right you know? and then we turn up all right so let's Can so I talk about something that happened when we turned up once i am i allowed to talk rude on you or not yeah 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 yeah. Who was that, Fred? They turned up at his door and he was still masturbating to the decoy. Was that be one of Becker's? Yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? I don't remember it. Oh, so many. I tried no, to forget. Was that our team? I think so. I can't remember. I think it's something to do with Becker, one of Becker's. But he was still masturbating when the hunters knocked at the door. What we wow. done? We done one as well. What did we do? So, or oh, a team done one that actually knocked at the door? Yeah, was, I saw it long ago. He still had a semi, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and another one they done as well. When it was, I thought it was Basingstoke. We done one, and it was an actual house for predators. Mm -hmm. And when they opened the door, they actually had something on the telly that it shouldn't have had on the telly. They were actually watching it while they actually opened the door. No. You know what I mean? To catch them. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't on that one. Yeah, no, no. It was another team. I think I watched oh, it on okay. another team. Wow. So another team, I actually, they were still watching whatever they were watching on the telly, what they shouldn't be watching. Did they get that yeah. on the live recording? Yeah, yeah they actually oh, wow. was at the door with wow. the This is a good yeah. thing about doing the lives as well, because oh. every predator does something different, so it shows you something else to be yeah. aware of. It's just the awareness side of it. Yeah, this yeah. is more what we're trying to get across to everyone else, that this is happening in your children's room, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would now go as far to say, easy, there's at least one pred on every single street in the country. Uh, yeah. At least. Would you say that's... <clears throat> yeah. yeah. When, when, when we were speaking to John Wedger the other day, John said that if you were to put, um, across London, if you were to put a little red blim on everybody that was looking up child abuse images at that mm. time, it would be one red map. Really? Yes. As much as that? Yes. And do you know another statistic that we were told recently is an offender that wants their court, that the average time to re-offend is four hours, isn't it? Yeah. Four hours. Yeah. Four hours. Four hours. Yeah. So, so you think there's one on every street? Easy. Yeah. What the fuck? When you, when you get decoys, when you get a decoy and they start up, a, say, a, a new child decoy, as soon as you go on the apps, ping, 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 you'll have about 40 messages from adults and you're clearly a child. You're clearly nine years old. You're clearly... Wow. I mean, we've done people, right. actually know people in our team, don't we? Mm. We've done yeah, well. yeah, yeah. We've done a couple there that our, t our security team have actually known them. Our security yeah. know them. Really? Yes. Or we've always said that, that when we first started, them. didn't we? We've always said, one day we're going to catch someone that we know, and it's happening now. We but like we say, them. we treat everyone the same. We're not going to treat anyone any different. No. You, yeah. You, you do this, we're going to get you or try and get you. That's yeah. simple. Yeah, we will get you. Let's not try. Yeah, we will get you. We Unfortunately, will. it'd be nice to think we could get them all. Yeah. But yeah. That's, that's the way I think. It's, I don't think you could ever it's just so much of it happening because like you know we all laugh at paedophile jokes we've all done it because you think they're unicorns right because you don't realise how many there are but one on every street mm, could well be yeah, yeah. So my name could that. be one it could be even more yeah, than that to be honest yeah. with you you don't know what they're doing once their front door's shut one of your neighbours are yeah. guaranteed yeah it's one of them things no one expresses like it's, they're, right. they're not going to express it to you so you're not going to so at, like, I, I don't obviously Obviously, you don't know the exact it doesn't, figures. It doesn't mean you've got to go out tomorrow <laughs> looking left and right. Oh, <laughs> mate, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> everyone is... The DBS <laughs> checking the neighbours. Yeah. Suspicious. Do you know, I'm just sitting there thinking, I mean, that bloke at the end of the road does, like Pervy Pete used to call him. But, you know, <laughs> Pervy Pete at the end of the road. There's a lot of Pervy There's Pete's. There's a lot of Pervy Pete's. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah. Pervy yeah. Pete. But I understand how some people, that's their fetish, but how many go through with... 
with I, I suppose you, you you're not finding them if they're not going through them yeah. but how many of that one per street actually go through with something it's, it's hard to say that isn't it, really? well, if you're talking about charges even just talking sexually to a child is a charge yeah. so if you're messaging a child yeah. sexually or you're grooming that is illegal the, the other so thing is go out and meet a child yeah and search when we're really. catching these guys, the reality of the situation is that most of the abuse cases happen within the circle of trust. Most of the kids that are being abused don't even know that there's anything wrong with what's happening to them at the time. Yeah. So, um, to get a, we've had a couple admit to what they've done in the past, but to get somebody to fully admit, a, a lot of these guys have touched their own kids. That's the sad reality of it is the uncles have touched their kids. Babies, they, when we catch a predator, on, the reality is that their urges are that direction. That's what they want. That, that is their target. And what's the easiest way to reach your target than to have somebody that's in your circle of trust, a family member, somebody that you babysit, somebody that authorised and have given you the trust to be in care of their child. So what we do as a team is when we're removing that mask, we're letting them people know who they're leaving around their kid. We're taking service law to another level where people don't have to wait for two officers and a, and a social worker to turn up four or five weeks later after they've even requested the information. Jay Hussain's a good example of that. Um, the fact that he was caught before he got stung by us. He was stung by the police, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. um, and nobody knew, not one, one of his neighbours knew he had been um, arrested and put in prison. Was he put in prison for that? He was, wasn't he? Which one was this? Jay Hussain. Um, oh, was the, it, yeah. what, the, um, the one that you like to urinate on the kids? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was caught by the police for us, and not one of his neighbours knew he'd been arrested or, or actually imprisoned mm -hmm. um, for uh, communications or touching a child, whatever it was. And it wasn't until we come along, and we got a sting on him after that, that all his neighbours found out, and they all knew to be watch their children around him, because he's been just let out loose. Nobody that's the thing, they come out. Yeah. That creates victims. You build an extension, the whole, whole, whole world know, but yeah, that's you it. go to prison and no one gets notified. No, no, that's it. And right. that's why they prefer to speak to the police than us, because they know they're going to get put out there with us. Yeah, yeah. and the, the thing is, they come out of prison, they're not allowed to go back to the area or something, they committed that crime, so they're pushed onto another area yeah. where they can do it again when they're not known. Yeah. And it ain't fair, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was a very memorable sting, that one, because <clears throat> we went to Luton for that sting, um, and... Like, we didn't know we'd been caught by the police ourselves. Um, it was an absolute grot bag, like a real grot bag. Like, and he was actually, he had friends. He kept mentioning a friend that he didn't want to grass up for that. But when we stung him, it was uh, a Muslim guy in a very predominantly Muslim area. And if you remember that day, the loot in keeping safe, another team turned up. Yeah, sister um, doesn't yeah. yeah. Another team turned up from, Mus um, from Luton that were sort of like they were a Muslim grace to it too, weren't they? But they come around and they took care of all the security, kept all the locals at bay and loved what we do. And now whenever we go into Luton, we'll always ask them to be there with us because they can control the environment and, and the situation. Um, but that thing was, when what was the judge's words when we went to the sentence on that? You are a true predator. That was her words, wasn't it? True danger. Yeah. To children as well, she said. Little yeah. girls. Little girls. What did he have? Is that the one that had eight solicitors on speed dial? Oh, the one that kept calling oh, the solicitor <laughs> <laughs> on the live. <laughs> on the live, yeah. Grassing yeah. himself up. That's how we found out it had been done before. Yeah. He was on the live calling his solicitor. Yeah. Saying, yeah. oh, you know what I've got done before before? Well, it's happening yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute <laughs> not it. As well what? as a paedophile. Why would a solicitor take that case on? That's another thing. Well, well, that, that's they a look job. Good. It's, it's good. a job as well for them, isn't it? you got to think. Yeah. We've got to earn a living. Courses, isn't it? And then, <laughs> I suppose. You wouldn't yeah. choose that job to no. earn a living. You, you wouldn't. wouldn't. No. But I, don't, no I, would, I wouldn't say they do so that sort of case it. every time. Do you know no. what I mean? It's just, I suppose, if it comes up, it's put in front of you. It's a job, isn't it? My brother, do you know what? My brother did law, and he was going to go into um, defence law, and down to the fact of he would have to, at some point, defend a paedophile. Nah, didn't go down that road. Yeah. A fair play to him because I wouldn't either. No, it's right. not. But it, it's, it's disgusting because it, it's it's. We've seen this in that they, they tried to get us chucked out for nothing just mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she was being funny, wasn't mm -hmm. she? Um, they do this for money, but they don't have to do such a good job. They don't have to ruin you. I've seen judges tell the barristers you're actually butchering the victim on stand. That that's not right. That's not right, especially when morally they know that that person has done it because they've spent that time with them. They've seen the evidence. They know he's mm -hmm. guilty. And they will sleep of a night, uh -huh, 
getting that paedophile off and letting him go back and walk that street. And what I'd like to see is that nonce that he's got off go and live with that barrister and his children and see how he feels then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All of his children for it, but yeah. I demand so the light detector. Yeah, I know they're what you're saying. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't wish it on no one. Yeah, no, this not. Yeah, they do. They just, just. It's another reality of this is, 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 is this is what makes it so hard for victims to come forward. Yeah. So when they when when they do get older and they do realise they're abused, because some people don't realise they're abused until they're older and they realise. Mm. Understand what it more. Yeah. There's so many different yeah. types of abuse as well, isn't it? And like, what defence? Barristers do their, their tactics are so so dirty, and I understand they've got a job, but they are ruthless. They'll victimize the predator and make the, the, the abused seem like she is a victim, and they'll try and do whatever they can to discredit that witness. That's what and they're 12 to... sometimes as well, right? So they're very young, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it can be a historical case, sometimes it can be someone that's 30 or 40 and going back and, and then having the strength to come forward and take it to court. But what these guys will do, these defense processes, is they'll rip their lives apart, they'll look for anything that they've done wrong in the past, anything that will discredit them, anything. And they'll the tactics that they'll use, like that, um, that Pred admitted that, didn't he? Because his barrister was doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. Which fellow was it? The one where he knocked and his mum answered, and we had to get him out of bed. We sat him in the car. It's second time offender. You was got him the first time. Was that the one we don't? Was that the one? Barking side. Was it Barking side? In the pub. We got him the in the pub, and then the, the second pub, yeah. time you was. The second time I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he admitted that, didn't he? That he's barking. Are you talking star. about? Um, well, I can't think of his name now. The one from the the pub in Barking mm. Yeah. He told me admitted it, didn't he? That he's barrister. Mm. He's exactly doing that, putting him through all this this um, therapy and that to make himself look good, like he's trying. And he admitted himself, it's a tactic. And he said, well, it ain't me, it's the barrister. Yeah, he's doing it all, yeah. Right. He's doing it's the it all for me. He's doing 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 it all for me. So you can see why they've got these numbers in their phone because they're all probably using the same barristers <coughs> on yeah. these, these yeah. social circles. Yeah. I wouldn't they're, say they're using the same barristers. It's, a, it's just a, it's just a defence barrister, mate. I wouldn't say they're using the same ones. Um, these are spread right across the yeah. country. However, um, I, I did have a valid point then. Um, we've. we've, we've I'll remember in a second. All right. Going back to saying, um, you said that you have found predators, the people, the friends of friends, and things like this, people you know, and things like that. This, this entered my mind. Like, what, what, how, do, so when someone joins one of your t t teams, how, d how do you know that's not a predator? So we do DBS checks. Uh, right. We would do a DBS or an acro tech. Um, and that doesn't mean, look, we're looking for sexual offenses. Right? Like, the, as a team, there's a lot of guys on our team that have had bad past. They yeah. have had bad yeah. past. When I say some of the security are very seasoned with men, they are. <laughs> they, they've, been, they've had a bad past. Um, but they're, they're, they've sorted their lives. They're on a real straight and now, and, you know, this has changed their lives. It's changed their mental health. We're not... When we do a DBS check, we're not looking for anything that you've done wrong in the past completely. We're looking for sexual offences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Domestic violence offences. Anything that would relate to what we were completely against. If back in, you know, 2008, you know, they, they were done for stealing, something or something like that, everybody's got a little bit of a past. Well, we don't look at that. Um, we're looking for sexual offences. And Yeah. But the trouble is, it's like anything like that we've done the other day, the scout lady, I mean... I suppose he had a DBS check. Just because they've got yeah. it, though, it doesn't mean it. It just means they haven't been done for it before. That's the trouble. Never yeah. been so caught. We, yeah. But we're pretty good. Like as I say, we've all got. We're a tight clique, and yeah. we put everyone on a training right to see how they get on, and do we? Yeah. The thing is, yeah. Though, and you get to understand people. Truth it is, you never know. There's no guarantee that there's not a paedophile around you. No. There isn't. No, it's true. We could just we could just so do well. our best yeah. to make sure we yeah. haven't. That's mm. all we can do. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they can't. If, well, they probably can't, uh, what's the word for it, uh, restrain if they're in that environment anyway, I'm guessing. Well, is it too tempting for them? Or? A lot of them just, you know, this is the thing, you know, they just can't stop, can they? They just do. No, well, it is something that They is. take any advantage of what they can. Mm -hmm. They could come into the team, we don't know that. We know they watch yeah. us, don't they? Yeah, yeah they, mean, watch they watch us. us. Yeah, yeah. That, that was another question. How yeah. many of them are actually... All of them, probably. Most of yeah. them are watching us, yeah. Trying to find out our tactics, how we work and all yeah. that. That's obviously why we try not to let our tactics out. More importantly, whether somebody they know is being caught in mm. their circle. And yeah. The yeah. thing is, yeah. you know, we are a team or we all know each other. 
we know each other's families. And bound by it. If somebody yeah. comes on, it's, you know, we know somebody they know, or, you know, we're a local team and we pick people like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, any organisation from police to what we do could be infiltrated, there's, there's, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. Just put that mic a bit closer to your mouth if you don't mind. That's it, that's a bit better. Probably wow. So, going back to your decoy stuff, here's a question. So, when you act as, as a child, uh-huh. who, who is that child? Who, who is the identity behind that? Obviously, it's not like a shut stop photo, is it? Like, what? Who? Um, or you're not allowed to say. If you're not allowed to say, you, then you've just got to be very careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We don't, the only, yeah. the only yeah, way I could yeah. the only create a story. You create a story, a backstory of a child, and then you play that story. Yeah, but he's talking about like, like imagery. Yeah, is it oh, like is it one that's like right, ten so years old? Have, so it's not a real yeah, child so we now. We have adults that are over eighteen, and they will supply us with their pictures. Say of themselves, if my decoy is nine, they'll give me pictures of themselves when they was nine, and we'll use that yeah. with their permission. That's quite obvious now. Now I think about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really obvious. Yeah. But every time someone shows me like a picture or a video from like five years ago, it's always small and pixelated and yeah, 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 it feels yeah. crap yeah, compared yeah. to today. Yeah. That's why we need a better technology. Yeah. Because you, <laughs> you can use AI now, can't you? Or something yeah. like madness like that now. I don't know. Is that, I don't so can't really like get this. too much away. Just say pass. Just say pass. You know what I talk yeah, about? Yeah. Say pass. Pass. <laughs> I've seen it on films. I've seen it on films. Quite <laughs> literally. Yeah. On Netflix yeah. and things. Yeah. I've got some stuff out yeah. of Netflix. We have now. to be careful what we can give out, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. For our, for our... We have our ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. that's, that's all smart. we can say. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I, I don't know what I can and can't yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. You can ask. We could just say pass. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything particular? Oh, there's so much questions here. I feel like I'm bouncing all over the way. Yeah. But um, if you're a parent, what are you looking for? That's what that's a, what we all need to know, really. Well, you know, the, 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 the and sim- the neighbours. The, sim- the simplest <laughs> yeah. answer to this is so simple: um, better education on it. You know, much deeper educated on it, and checking the devices, checking your kids' devices. There is apps that you can download onto your phone as a parent <coughs> that can monitor your other kids' smart device, so any activity they have on it goes through you. I would always advise that. One thing I would say is, although as your kids get older, you've got that that, that thing that you battle, you know, what, what, what do I leave private? What is their private? Well, for me, as a parent, <laughs> You can never, you've got to check that, you know, or you might be thinking that you're taking their privacy a little bit, but that one time you check could be the time that you've stopped anything happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, all, we're all parents, aren't we? Yeah, that's it, so yeah. And why can't, why can't they bring it into schools? Why can't they make oh, it yeah. into schools? You know what I mean? I think they've made a start. They've made a start to yeah, that. They? <clears throat> yeah, that's what I mean. We'd, we'd like, wouldn't we, to do a bit more of awareness like with schools? Yeah. Because... It's all right just saying looking in parents, but there is more to it, you know. It's not just as simple as that. You need to know. We need to train we the won't, parents. We won't say over it, but obviously there's, there's things they need to look out for. There's certain things that, yeah. that can help, you know. It will slow it's slow the process. With, with my, one of my, my eldest son, and he's not allowed earphones. Because the way I see it is, I might be busy doing what I'm doing, I can't see what he's doing, but I can always hear who's online. And I can always hear who he's talking to. And I think too many parents give their kids earphones, keep them quiet, they don't want to hear the noise. Mm. You're missing out. That's a big advantage because <coughs> they forget that you're you're listening as well yeah. to children. Mm. So you, you can hear exactly what's going on. Who they're talking to, and you, you're not going to miss. You're not going to miss a voice. Yeah. Like, voice. even I've noticed voice. on like a, like a game console. Why am I playing with ten year olds and playing with forty year olds? Like surely the console itself can figure out. Well, the thing is, a lot of people lie about details anyway, didn't they? I mean, you don't usually use an, your real name. Yeah, you're, I make, suppose. you're making up names as well, aren't you? So, and a lot of these kids, they, these are 18 games. So, yeah. really, truly, they should be over parents 18. Public, really, yeah. But that's, that's again, it's, it's, it's down to us as parents, isn't it, to sort that yeah. out? Do you know what I mean, really? Yeah. I mean, there's so, so many consoles and devices and apps, and you, you literally got to have your eyes everywhere, haven't you? Like, yeah. My, my, my son's 16, but he, I mean, from the age of 10 he's probably been playing games that he, sh- he shouldn't be playing but it, it's t- I was playing Grand Theft Auto at like 5 you know, we like, talking about these well this was it yeah. we weren't online though but we just, no we didn't have yeah, online yeah. Disc, it? yeah PS2 there is, there is one old order. do you remember the case that we done I think you might have decoyed them all um, wasted um, 
you remember where the predator, he was a rear fender, we went up, we had to persuade him to come out of the house from his wife. Um, <clears throat> we had to persuade him to come out of the house from his wife. But he was saying to the child that he wanted to kill her mum in front of him. Do you remember that one? Or killed a carer in killed front carer, of, him, in front of her. Wasn't that Dagnar? No, it was, no? we had to drive up. It was up the youngish old. fella Lancashire who was sat in police. the car. Was it the youngish fella no, sat in the, the car? the old boy. The one we had to, we tapped on the window and we had to persuade his wife and then we oh, got him out. Oh, yes. And he was graphically yes. describing in front of this child that he wanted to kill the carer. I think it was the mum, wasn't it? What would you do? Yeah. I want to tie your mum up and kill her in front of you and then have sex with you, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I mean, that's the dark. Dark. Yeah, you, there's no darker than that. You, you, but would he have been capable of it? I know they say these things. You don't know. How many this of them... is the thing. You don't know, do you? You can't really... You can't argue. They're all when, capable of it, really, aren't they? When somebody's abused a child, um, it's not really some matter of whether they're capable. It's what they don't want to get caught with. And what levels would they do to not get caught? If killing a child is something that would, in their head, justify and get away with it, they would. I mean, OK, did Ian Huntley abuse the ch children? Well, they, I, I think there was, I think there was something there. That's yeah, why. Yeah, in the bath, didn't that's he? That's why he done yeah. what he done. I yeah. think. Yeah. However, the, 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 you know, Huntley killed the kids to cover his tracks and not get caught. Um, and there's been a lot of cases where people have not intended to originally kill the victim, but have done to cover their tracks. It's the only way out. Yeah. No. And the thing is, there's kids going missing all the time, isn't it? And you won't even know they're gone. They no, could be in a field thing. somewhere. There's kids going yeah. missing all the time. Yeah. Now to a certain absolute, like, you can sort of see they put people put like missing, please if you see, blah, blah. but you got to think oh, that's only recent. Over the years ago, that weren't about. So how many kids have gone missing and they're never found? Yeah, and it's not publicised on telly like. It, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You'd think it'd be on the telly like the local girls been missing for yeah, three, exactly. one, three days, when, four days. When you have a lot of it going on, and it's a lot of the children that are in care. Because you're not, they're not going to be as noticed. No, no, that's it. And they're running away, running away. That's it. They're running away, yeah, running away. Things, yeah. Always running away. Yeah. yeah. This, this is a true fact. We were speaking to, um, obviously, we had that interview with John Wedge the other day. Guess how many? Uh, what was it? Child, ch um, child foster homes, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Guess, yeah. have a guess how many in the UK child foster homes there are. <coughs> have a guess. <coughs> Two hundred, three hundred. Yeah, it's either a lot or or, or none. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Fifty-four thousand. Really? Fifty-four thousand. Fifty-four thousand homes taking multiple kids and look after the vulnerable kids. And that's the homes. What about the foster homes and all that? That's just that's just the, the that's fifty-four thousand of them. I mean, it, it, that's fifty-four thousand vulnerable kids. That's, that's probably more than At schools least. in the country, right? It must be. And the, and the, and the thing is, is, is with a child, what the biggest way of grooming these vulnerable kids is. They they feed them the love, the family story. They gifts. feed them the, the yeah. way the, the way that the well the gifts is a, a little part of it, but the biggest part of how they groom somebody is by giving them the family hope, by giving them the love, by so saying I love you. You know, they, a lot of them have never been loved. Sorry. Like bear in mind they're in their bedrooms they in the foster home. That's what they're doing. They're, they're good at what they do. The grooming tactics are so good at what they do. These kids actually fall for it. They believe that they're going to get a better future. This is going to be this. This is going to be that. They don't realise what they're going to be done is. He's going to get his end away. I think he's going to have a good time, and then she's going to be the squad. Yeah. So it's just it's horrible. It's horrible for it. And these and, and these predators could probably do multiple hundreds of kids a year. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like trying anyway. Trying. Yeah, trying. Yeah. Well, they are doing. You know, yeah. what I mean? we, we just that's what we're trying to stop. Wow. We're not going to stop it. Dark. Yeah. yeah. Dark. <laughs> dark. I mean, it's even been people go chemical castration. It's a proven fact that hasn't even stopped them. When someone's chemically castrated, they can still abuse a child. Them. It's actually. It's what does that mean? Sorry, chemistry, chemical castration. Um, to take away the energy. Take away the energy. Hormones, the like that, the male. Yeah. To make you basically um, impotent. Impotent. Yeah. To make. You, right. I, I believe, from what I heard, I don't. Look it slows your sex drive down as well, doesn't it? Or doesn't it bring the sound down? Yeah. Yeah. There is there is some countries in the world I believe that gives offenders a choice whether to have that or to do a long prison term. I don't know. I'll have to look into that and get more factual on it. But it should be both, really. You should have them both really done. Well, I think we do if we set big examples. 
Yeah. You know, cause if you, it's no fear. Like, what do they, they go to prison, don't they? How many re-offenders do we see? Prison's not a deterrent for these guys. Well, they, they go in their own wing as if well, anything, don't they? If anything, these, these go mixed. into prison. Yeah. They put they put into special prisons designed for these. Yeah. Where they get all this money spent on that. But then they're yeah. mixing with other people. They're learning new techniques. Yeah. Or learning different techniques and maybe combining them techniques to make a better becomes a hive, and, doesn't it? Really, yeah. 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 That's yeah. the yeah. thing. And there is yeah. prisons out there, literally solely designed to hold these people, and they get X amount of money therapy. And this is the thing is, yeah, what people and I've, this is the people that's been hurt. They're paying for their keep as well with, like, with yeah. the taxes and things like that. So not only have you been scarred, but you've got to pay for them to then be in prison, get this so-called therapy for them. And then yeah. a lot of the time, they do come out and reoffend. Yeah. Because the urge is just, you never get rid of it. No. Yeah. They've got that taste, that's all they like, that's what floats their boat, do you know what I mean? So they're not going to just change it, no one can change it. A textbook, like a textbook can't change it, I couldn't change it, yeah. and a professional couldn't change it. It's just in here, isn't it? And it's, it's what they like, it's what they prefer, it is. Yeah, because I, I, I was told prisoners would normally stab paedophiles back in the day, or... Uh, acid and face and hanging, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Your kind of initiation was to hurt the, the paedophile. But if they're putting them in separate wings, then they're removing the fear. Yeah. And which is creating a storm. Which is ridiculous. And this is the thing, and the sentencing as well, which just, you've got to think, they're getting silly sentences like, oh, right, that was a good one, eight years. And don't get me wrong, there is some that has gone above 10, maybe for a serious, serious, serious. But that's still not as much but as But that, that's what I'm saying. No, but at the end of the day, it, yeah. the people they've like hurt, them children they've hurt, are scarred for life. They's, they're, they're never going to stop thinking about it. It's always going to be there. They might even have a good year, two years, not think about it, have a, but then all of a sudden it'll come back. It's always, it's implanted yeah, yeah. in their head. They're scarred for life and these people are right after six years or... So they, life and mental health issues, basically. Exactly, and it leads on to so many bigger things. Like they can then turn to drugs during, don't they? And it does happen, even suicide. Self-harming, like and suicide, yeah. yeah. This is why I kind of, you know, the, the custodials, yeah, great, brilliant, taking them off the street. But they are segregated from mainstream jail. It does become a school for nonces um, where they could level the levels of not being detected or enhanced. And we can tell when we catch them before we catch them. You can tell the, the a reoffender that's been and done a custodial sentence. And it's they must. If you're put in a cell with a like-minded guy, you're going to discuss it, aren't you? You're going to talk about what the problem is. Yeah, you got literally. Th th well, Endless amount of times, so, years of. So then the biggest question is, what's your answer to stop it? Well, for me, that's why it's always about the awareness. It's always about letting people know who lives next door, whose hand they're shaking. It should be a life on tag or a certain coloured well, one. I should, they should even. have some sort of monitoring where they should be absolutely monitored twenty four seven. Yeah, but it's just it don't happen. It's, it's, it's it, like there's something there to block that bit. It's so they, easily it could be so about. easily done, couldn't it? Do you, yeah. It could be so easily done. Let's face it; they could have a, a a tag that they'd have to wear for the rest of their lives, and they could be monitored, like tracker tag or something. What they could have all this, but the trouble is they're worried about someone's got to monitor it, and it's yeah. costing money. Yeah, funding. It's all but about funding. But at the end of the day, right? at the minute they're going and looking. Um, they're checking their one devices, one device if they're a reoffender, but they've got a second one in the drawer that the officers yeah. don't know about that they're using to talk to children still. Nothing's foolproof, but that's just ridiculous. Well, yeah. We had a silly guy, didn't he? He come out and he, he was still on bail and he's, he's talking to the same decoy. Yes. yes. That's the same oh, one. Come on. Yeah. Yes. He was talking about, yes. He's actually talking to the same, do you remember me? Yeah, because he, cause he, he, he had so many, I suppose. He didn't realise what one he got. This is, this he got, is the he trouble. He got nicked for. <laughs> you know? That's mental, isn't it? Yeah. And while they're sitting in the police station, they've still got the urge, they still want to, do you know what I mean? Because it turns them on. It's what they like, that's the thing. And like I said, nothing's going to change them. They're not... Worried about sitting in the police station for 24 hours, they then get bailed, then they can come out and do it again, which is proof of happening. Yeah. And it, it, it's just not fair. I don't think it's fair on the kids either. I said to this predator when we stung him, I said, if you do this again, you'll be seeing my top knot in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and six months later, he's, he, he, he wasn't just doing it again. He had re engaged with the same child yeah, just, that he was yeah. arrested for. I mean, the, the, what does that tell you? It just says, I'm talking to so many, I've forgotten the guy that I was arrested for. It's, it's almost... It's uh, not an illness, it, it's just it, you. That's that's it, It's a, that's how you are. You know, some people are straight, some people are gay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You are just a paedophile, that's what they like. And unfortunately, you're never going to stop it with these silly... Well, you wouldn't stop it even if they had life hanging and things like that. You still get people doing it. Because that'd be even a more buzz to them, do you know what I mean? Because if they're getting away with that, they think, well, do you know what I mean? It's, 
it's, yeah. it's nasty to think, but that's what they're like, isn't it? It's, What's the biggest signs to spot one? Let's say I'm in a, I'm in a supermarket, whatever. Like we're we're saying this for people to now open their eyes a little bit. What 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 signs are you looking for? That's, would, that's quite obvious. It, it would be irresponsible for us to answer that because there's no there's no, no there's, there's no, no there's no there's no ex- exterior. If I said something, it'd just be making people worry, and they'd be, you know, looking at people in the way they're not they're not supposed to. If someone has a slight weird look yeah. or more, the guy that know, buys it, bread, everyone's getting one brown bread again, now. Again, <laughs> again, <laughs> a little it's bit it's of autism or something. Yeah, that's the good it's thing about the, common sense, isn't it? That's, that's the good thing about the lives as well, isn't it? Because people, like I said earlier, there's so many different tactics and things like that. So people watching the lives, yeah, they might. Hold on a minute, my child's been acting a bit like that, or and then it might give them the to go and check it, and then. Bang! They might find something. It's it's, it's some more. Yeah. It's so it's more common than these people think. This is the trouble. It's so common. Isn't it? Was was your question? What's the signs of a child that's being groomed, or what's the signs of a predator? Uh, well, might as well be both. Right, might as so well be the, both. Yeah, the, this, the, the the signs of a child being groomed. Um, I mean, there could be a few of them, couldn't there? I mean, the, 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 just, just changing, signs the of a change in the behaviour of a child. Could be, yeah. Even even this this attachment from their actual parents, where the guys groomed them into believing that their parents are not good for them, that they're the better person in their life. This there's, there's something to say a sign of a predator would be a bit irresponsible for us because there isn't these guys don't have an exterior yeah. sign on them that says that. Um, I mean, I've, God, if you're yeah, still, if you're still in the middle of a field and a guy's sitting there watching a young girl in a park inappropriately, yeah, that's yeah. a bit of an obvious sign. But yeah. General as a characteristic, it would be irresponsible to say that because what would happen then is people would go out and start identifying even people with slight autism and stuff and thinking that their urges are towards children, you know? The trouble is, people, like years ago, like everyone had a perception like what a nonce looked like, didn't they? A, a dirty old man, everyone do you want to look out for the dirty yeah, old in man. In a raincoat or yeah, whatever. You know, yeah. you had, everyone had <laughs> that, that one guy in the park, but, innit? Yeah, yeah, like, it, had, yeah. That, but it's probably not that fella. It's probably like the young fella over there now, do you yeah. know what I mean? They're getting as young as 21, there's 18 year olds. They've always been that young though. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just it's, more aware now. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, like, it's, it's the start of it. There ain't oh. no specific look to them, is it? Like, but we done one in Guildford, didn't we? And he was 22. Was he 22? And he was in a, in a paedophile ring? Yeah, oh, the one yes. we, we didn't even know that, did we? Yeah. You, you got it out of him, did we? Were sitting this in is the thing house. as well. This is why we were like, that that? doing the hunting. Yeah, where was that? That was in Guildford. No, was it Guildford, was Sussex. Sussex? Oh, was it Sussex? Was Sussex, it Sussex? Yeah, yeah, Sussex. Sussex. We caught the the guy that he knew a couple of weeks. Couple, that's it. Just down the road, yeah, about yeah, a mile so away. Was, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he hasn't oh. been convicted yet, so I can't say. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were very close to each other. Yeah, but he was only twenty-two. Was he? Twenty-two. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Very deep dark rings. Yes. He had seen um, mm. abuse images of a f- f- five-year-olds. I mean, the guy we caught the other day had seen abuse images of three-year-olds. Like, you know, a three-year-old baby. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is the scary thing. As much as it's dark and as much as you say, you know, oh, it's never come across it, the reality of it is. I mean, we were talking to this predator the other day who, I said to him, you know, have you, have you been communicating with like-minded people, gentlemen as yourselves, like-minded guys as yourself? Well, that's the thing he said. He goes, it's not a man. Mm. So he's been getting images from a woman in America that is selling and providing and distributing images of her own kids to make money. This is a free... That, I mean, what we wouldn't yeah, imagine... That one, didn't it? I think that was the one that's the There's three-year-old, three-year-old babies out there being sexually abused. You would never even dream anybody could do that. No, no. To their own no. child. Yeah. yeah. Let someone get pleasure out of that. Yeah. That's, that's so, the sick thing. Mark. Do they do things with their own children? Um, I heard years ago it was mo- more commonly found it wasn't in their children. It was mm. other children. Probably it's, like well, a, I don't, it's a what, family member or someone close usually yeah. in it. 99% of the It's always the weird uncle and things like that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it, yeah. Again, like a lot of paedophiles are cool opportunists. So when when an opportunity arises, they'll take that if, they, if they're trustful enough and right. they're willing enough. The sad thing is a lot of it, a lot of the cases where people get custodials, it is for their own kids, it is for their own family members. It's very taboo and brushed under the carpet. The police catch yeah. it and it's very protected and they're safeguarded to an extreme level. Um, Team Scorpion, they'd caught a guy off the off the logs and who ended up being he'd been abusing his seven and eleven year old for a long time. He got twenty two years inside. Um 
So then, we, I mean, we've had these chats, haven't we, Kate? Does a, does, a, does a paedophile have a moral boundary where they wouldn't touch their own kids but touch somebody else's kids? My answer to that would be, even if they did start by having that moral boundary, once they've had that craving and had that urge satisfied, would they then divert that onto their kids? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. That's <laughs> louder than headphones. <laughs> Is that yours? <laughs> yeah. I, I have noticed as well, uh, generally, these paedophiles seem to be white men mm. generally do, do is it's it all, it's more in, common in one every nationality race, every race no. I reckon no. every race in it but we do we have I think personally I think I have stung myself more white yeah I, mean, I ain't gonna lie he has been in it like this I tend to find that if you work if the teams that work um, dating sites they seem to catch more foreigners don't they they seem to catch a lot of um, mixed cultures where you, where we work predominantly, a lot of pre-teen sites where people are actively seeking out the, um, a pre-teen or a child. The majority of them are English, aren't they? English, English white. Which is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. Not from the decon point of view. Yeah. When you're on the site, hmm? I wouldn't agree with that. I'll say I'll just say from, from my personal from experience. From view, I'd say yeah. it's, it's not. I won't say but I'd say it's mixed white. anyway. It's, I'd say like it's in I'm every talking race. about dating sites. He's just saying what sort of sites are what. On a dating site, you I normally... Don't know, I, work, I work the dating sites and I work the kids apps. I don't, I don't want to say anything. I personally have stung more work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it's a predominantly white country, isn't it? So I guess the odds are going to be higher. But there are some like third world countries that the like kids at 12 are getting married. So mm. what, what we would, would you do about those sort of things? Just out of our hands, but if we could, it would be nice to stop it, wouldn't it? Because these are kids at the end, they're not fully formed, yeah. they're yeah. not adults, they're, they're, they're children, and kids need to be kids, it's part of growing up. Yeah. They don't need to go through that yet, they've got that later on in life, if, like, do you know what I mean? All the sex side of it, why, why are young? It's eight o'clock. Just let them Sorry. live their life. We had that kid. <laughs> that hour went fast, didn't oh, it? You know, I cannot turn that off. I've looked everywhere, I'm gonna have to re wipe the computer, start fresh for <laughs> that fresh one. Shit. I know. It's almost like I'm blind, isn't it? <laughs> it's now Thursday. It's That's that be your next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's it. laughs> I mean, I don't know this. Is, is is there still countries that allow in marriage at twelve? I don't know. Yeah, there is, but it's um, it's behind closed doors sort of, and yeah. it's out the back, out the way, yeah. and no one sees it. But it does happen still, yeah. Well, what do you do with them countries? Like, well, do, you, do, you point, do you point fingers and say like, ah, come on? I mean, a like, lot of countries, it's illegal. Officially, it's illegal, but there's a lot of backhanders and a lot of dodgy stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, you said before um, when we spoke uh, when we spoke the other day that you you get quite a lot of people going on holiday, if you will, to like place like Thailand to Absolutely. commit the offence and then come back. Absolutely, I mean, the, the, the disgusting thing with that is a lot of these guys go to Thailand because the Thai race they look very petite anyway. They're very young looking women. And China is massive for going to Thailand. So the Chinese are massive for some reason. This the Japanese and Chinese for schoolgirl um, adult entertainment. Um, yeah, but, but you know you walk. You know I've been to Thailand and I've, I've, I've walked the streets before, and you're seeing like a, a seventy year old guy walking down the road with, you know, a tie that looks really really young. The, the problem is, is these are all the Philippines and Thailand. These are the countries where. The sex trade in these countries is a massive part of the economy. That's the sad thing about it. I mean, people put... In Thailand, people will almost make their child into a ladyboy so they can go out and work and send money back to the family and the farms. That's a sad fact, but that's how it is. Yeah. A lot of these... In Thailand, a lot of the way it works is that um, women, women will have kids, leave the kids with their parents, go into these cities work and send 95% of their wages back home to the family and live off new enough nothing. Um, that's massive in Thailand. I mean, the sex industry out there is, unfortunately, it's a massive a part of their economy. And if, would they sustain themselves if you just went and shut that down and took no, it away? No, I wouldn't, would I? And you've got the yeah. flip side of the parents who sell their children. Yep. Actually, sell their children to the sex industry. Traffic them, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did see a, like a BBC 
Stacey Dooley. Do- doc- a documentary on this. Was it, was it Stacey Dooley? I think it might be and Stacey was, Dooley. And I was talking to a couple that planned to sell the baby. And anyway, they'd been talking for, for six months or whatever. And when the baby was just born, then they was going to this place to deliver the baby. Then they got stunk, basically. Um, so there's in talks to parents to sell the kids from yeah. birth yeah. already. Yeah, already, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, that's got. But that's got to be a crazy person in itself, right? Yeah, like money, isn't it? is that that's to live? All sorts, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. got to be worse than a paedophile by selling your newborn into a sex ring, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Some people just don't see children as loving. Like, do you know what I mean? They don't see yeah. them as children, and they're part of them. They see it. It's probably just a job to them. Do you know what I mean? They don't. It's horrible. It is horrible, isn't it? You'd like to think parents have that compassion and that natural love for their child, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, you think so? I, I sort of live for my child, like let yeah. alone yes. to, yeah. to put anything on him. So anyway, let's. Um, I think we've done most of these, but let's end up with the last bit. And so, you you actually help victims as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so victims, can, if they if they watch this, you can contact Broken Dreams, right? Yeah. So, so we've got a page that runs a group, not a page, a group. It's a closed group. Um, it's got about four thousand members in it now. But it's, it's it's run for survivors, drug addicts. Um, people with mental health problems. And the reason is is because one sort of creates the other. An abused victim can become a drug addict. Um, drug um, abuse can create mental health issues. So we try and help. The power of that group is everybody in it. Yeah. Um, even though I do a few interviews and what have you not in it, the power of that group is people holding their hands out and helping each other for free, people that have been in the same situation, and talking. Talking is one of the biggest tools that you have. When you when you trap something in your mind, in your head, that happened to you as a child, you put it to the back of your head, you go through life and you, you're almost on a, on a flat level because you feel like you're dealing with it. But really and truly you're not. You're creating loads of mental health issues, you're, became, you're creating resentment, distrust towards your partners, insecurities. All these things that are very indirect, you don't know this, you're actually having it because you live with it for so long. It's normal. Yeah. But when you release that, when you bring that from the front, back of your mind to the front of your mind, <clears throat> and you deal with it, and you let it go, and you start to deal with the problem that's held you back, that power of talking, even for ex veterans when they've left the forces, that power of talking is massive. It's something that the humans have. We all give to a bit of mouth, some of. Some of us can't yeah. talk, but we can... Gives you a way to break down, doesn't it? But in a nice absolutely, way. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's a good healing tool to talk. And it shows you're not alone <coughs> as well, doesn't it? You're not alone out there. Absolutely, yeah. So what's that called if <coughs> someone was to search? <coughs> well, what's it called if that was to secrets. search? Uh, dark yeah. Secrets. That's Dark Secrets on dark Facebook, secrets. right? So the link is on our awareness page. I'll stick underneath this this video mm-hmm. as well. Okay. It's um, constantly put on the, on the, on the page. Um... I don't know if this is more random, but I'm going to ask it. But what's the ideal scenario for you? So, so if you used to get help from from the government, what is it? The ideal scenario, like what what help is it you need in an ideal world? Um, I suppose I'd like to be trusted more as an organisation where we would get a few more, i.e., when we know that something's going on, we'd like be ideal to have a few more powers, i.e., when we know something's going on, you know. Like the police, they'll knock on the door. Hello, can I come in? They'll they'll go in. They know that they've got to go in and execute that straight away, so the guy can't get in and delete nothing. Yeah, yeah. Anything else in the house? You you've disrupted their life there and then. Don't give them time to you know. The problem is sometimes if someone shut the door on us, they can go in and start deleting. We had one yeah, that one we done the other day. <clears throat> while we was waiting for him to so called get out of bed, towards the end I got it out that he was actually deleting stuff, wasn't he? Yeah. So, and software like. Like uh, an injection of software, so teams can modernise what they're doing and take it to the next level. Because <clears throat> the more that we're out there, the more that they know that we're out there, the more that they're doing things to make sure we're not them people that are out there. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm with you. With you. And so, yeah, so we can find you on uh, on Facebook. That's Broken Dreams <laughs> Awareness. You do lives and things like that, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, if you could help out over there, that'd be great. Um, and uh, I, I think we're coming towards the end there. And just one last informa- uh, question is that if somebody is suspicious of a predator and that uh, something's going wrong, uh, well, a neighbour, whatever it is, can they contact you? Um, 
and say, look, something don't seem right here. And yeah, kind of be your eyes and ears. Suppose, didn't they? But if you really think there's something going on, I suppose just contact the police. Contact it? the police. Yeah. Is that yeah. the yeah. way service law comes into play? And you can ask. You can, it's a, yeah, I mean, that's if, it's a part, that's if it's a partner. I mean, someone has a sort of inkling oh, yeah. or something, maybe, yeah. and they just want to get a bit of reassurance that something ain't right or it shouldn't be like that. They can always ask, but if you really do honestly think that there is something deep dark there, just please, just go yeah. straight to the police, really. Yeah. Trust your gut. Yeah, trust your gut. So any partner that's met somebody that's met up with somebody, if they have any suspicions, there is something called service law, where they can approach the police, and if they are an offender, they have a right to know, okay? Um, yeah. That law should ever always be exercised if you have any doubts about somebody you've just met. If it's something that's coming into your kids' inboxes or, or um, somebody that you believe is grooming your child, 101, straight away. Block the person, keep the phone, 101. <clears throat> Anybody that's ever turns on their phone and you know a kid's been sent an indecent image, turn the phone straight off, contact the police, um, 101 it. Don't put the phone back on until the police have come, um, because even if you open that photo and show some show somebody else, that could be deemed as distribution. Um, common sense, basically. Um, <laughs> service law exercise that if you believe you've met somebody and you have any suspicions. That is such a great law put in. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, sometimes you've got. To this, if, even if your children say something, a lot of children get pushed up, no, that ain't like that, no, it won't. Just listen sit back and think. Listen. Just, yeah, yeah, just listen, listen properly. Just... Listen to your kids, yeah. yeah. Kids don't lie. No. no. They don't. No. Very Not rare. things like that. It's, very that's, rare. That's, that's... Very rare. And especially if a young child's coming out with certain things that just really take that into consideration because that is... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Because you say, like, some predators send them stuff. Mm -hmm. So just keep an eye out for stuff that you're not buying as well. Oh, please. Yes. It was one of the Gifts. big red alerts for me. Well, we had, we had one of them sending them money, didn't we? <coughs> sending them Gifts, bank transfers. Bringing them, like, even when they come to meet them, bringing them food, food didn't they? they yeah. bring hair, food. hair straighteners. Hair straighteners. And, yeah, yeah, we had one of hair straighteners. Yeah. yeah, there's so many tactics that they use. The trouble yeah. is, with young yeah. child, we only teach them don't take sweets off a stranger. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Don't take, what's a child going to do if they offer them an iPad in a box? This yeah. is where they this take advantage the of poverty, though. This yeah. is what they do. And this, yeah. is the, this is the areas they'll predominantly try and aim for, wouldn't it? Because these kids want and need stuff. They'll, they'll buy them an iPhone. And they'll, they'll try and... This, yeah. the New trainers, yeah. stuff and like that. Yeah. Got nothing. yeah. Okay. Oh, I think that wraps up. Yeah, there. so... Is there anything you want to say? Guys, listen, um, before we wrap this up, we're an Essex-bound team. We pride ourselves in policing Essex more than any other county, as you know, even though we'll go all over Essex, it's our county, Essex is our back door, it's where our kids play, it's our backyard, it's our stomping ground where we grew up. Anybody that wants to join our team, be part of the security, please message Broken Dreams. If you've got a SIA, DBS check, that's what's required. Yep. Um, Darren will get hold of you. Anybody in the future is thinking about decoying, please message the page. Um, any survivors out there that are dealing with their struggles, their abuse, Dark Secrets link, you're going to share it underneath this podcast. Um, we always share it on the page. And apart from that, keep following, keep sharing, yeah. guys. Yeah, the, 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 the main thing we're doing here is to, is to hit awareness. Most people have a 1,000 people on their Facebook from 500 to 1,000. You press that share button once, you've shared it to 500 people. If everybody does that, everybody, the awareness spreads far quicker. Yeah. So share, 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 get it out there. Keep our sieves. Kids safer. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Just thank you for what you do. Life, thanks, yeah. uh, thanks for being a guest. Definitely an interesting one. Thanks yeah. for having us. Uh, I've learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. One on every yeah. street. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm thinking about now. At least. At least. At least. At least. At least. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, last thing as well, you you were saying maybe that we could use Dark Secrets and do a couple of podcasts in the future. Oh, absolutely. Um, Many be like. So, you know, guys, anyone that watches this, when we share this on the page, any Dark Secrets followers, um, you can blur their pa face out, can't you? Uh, we'll figure something out. Yeah? We'll figure something um, out. So we can do podcasts in the future. Anybody that wants to say their story on a one-to-one -one basis with me, um, we can sit down here on a relaxed atmosphere and um, you can share the, share your story with us. And um, It's nothing we will offend us, is it? You know what nah. I mean? We've pretty much... Yeah. Well, we say we are, there's always something else that's a bit different, but it's... Yeah. We, we've learned to sort of just... We don't brush it off. We, we take everything seriously, you know what I mean? But... 
there's ways we deal with it afterwards and all that to try and help us in there. But yeah, and any professionals in the industry that feel that an interview with them would be constructive with us, um, yeah. I'd love to do that. Uh, yeah. ex, ex police officers, ex social workers, um, ex you know people that, that that work with therapy to um, safeguarding. Yeah, and people that work with therapy with these sex offenders to come up and have a chat with us and give us your view on it. Um, I think the idea of this is always to try and understand it. It's like cancer, you know, you're never going to understand it fully, but if you can understand it enough to slow it down, then we're They can come forward. up anonymously, yeah. can't they? Yeah, and you can come up and talk anonymously. Um, again, we'll sort of something out where their face can be misted out. Um, or you, if you want to show your face, we can have a one-to-one -one interview. We'll be set up here just as we are now. Um, yeah. Yeah, cheers for having us up here, buddy. Yeah, yeah no worries. I've had fun. Thank you. All right then. Cheers.